Okay, well, welcome everybody and hello, and uh, we're here today to talk about the, uh, well, basically about the new features of your that have come into play between version 2 and version 2.1, which we released uh, last Friday. Um, to start off with, I'm going to just quickly go over the architecture of the, um, of the, of the environment, then I'll hand over to Marcello to present uh, the basic features and some process configuration information. Then I'll come back and talk about the, the uh, new features um, from a user perspective of 2.1. There's a lot of changes between 2.0 and 2.1 under the surface, under the hood, uh, which uh, while I can talk about, it's quite boring to discuss. So I'll um, just concentrate on the, on the things, things that you can actually see that are different. Um, basically, the environment is the core environment is you have a, have a Yule engine running up here and there's uh, three core services just distributed with the uh, basic environment. Uh, the resource service which looks after resourcing um, and uh, um, associated tasks with people. Um, the web service invoker which invokes, as the name implies, web services on behalf of tasks and the worklet service which looks after uh, exception handling and flexibility. I won't go into in, in, any more discussion about the features of those things at this stage. Um, the engine itself has a number of interfaces with, through which the services interact. Um, interface A deals with um, the loading and unloading of specifications, the creation and, um, and modification and um, deletion of uh, accounts, client accounts. And um, the distribution of the um, information about services that are registered with the engine as well, parts of interface A. Interface B is to do with uh, all of the uh, things to do with process instance. So what tasks are, avail are available, uh, what, this, what this, this, this statuses are, what the case statuses are, and all that sort of thing. Interface, a, interface X is the uh, exception handling interface. So it deals with passing events to an exception handling service uh, to check for and possibly handle any exceptions that may occur during a process instance's life cycle. Okay, so that's the engine. Oh, there's also interface E, which is the logging interface that plugs into the process logs, and through that you can get access to the process logs and get information about uh, historical information about processes. Now here we have the process designer, which is another name for the Yule editor, it's a standalone Java application. It talks to the engine through interface A. Um, to basically just to get information about what services are av available to associate with tasks at this design time. Uh, it also talks to the resource service through an interface R, and interface R is the, um, the resource interface, so it gives uh, inf information about what resources are uh, loaded into the org model that the resource service uh, loads up at startup, and therefore what participants and what roles and things you can assign to tasks at design time. Um, the resource service itself talks to the um, Yule engine through interface A, interface B, and interface B, even though it's not having not, not, not on there. Uh, it uses interface A to load and unload specifications. It uses interface B to start cases and monitor cases and that sort of thing. Uh, Resource service also has an interface O, which is the data source interface or the org data, data model interface. It allows uh, you to plug in other organizational data models besides the one that's by default built into the resource service. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Interface W is the uh, work queue interface, work queue gateway. So other work lists can get information to what work items are on particular user's queues um, and, and can, can, can manipulate that. So anything that is available in the default um, work list handler of the resource service is available through the, the API for other people to plug in their own work list handler. And computer event logs. And it also provides, as I said, the default work list for users and also for administration of uh, your specifications and processes. Um, 
web service invoker, as I said, just, just invokes web services on behalf of the task. It talks to interface B to get a task from the engine that needs to be interfaced with a web service, which it does and then passes back the results. Pretty simple service. The workload service, as I said, handles exception handling and flexibility. It has a rules base to, from which it determines uh, which uh, exception handling um, process to run on an, on an exception or which workload to run on, flex on a task to make it more flexible. Uh, has its own event logs and, and also talks to the process designer in so far as the your editor creates workloads which are basically simply specifications in their own right and plug them into the workload service. So that's the basics of the architecture. There's also a, there's a new service, if you like, a monitoring service which provides basic monitoring information, which again we'll talk about a little bit later, it doesn't appear on this diagram. Um, and it's not actually a service, but we'll talk about that too a bit, a bit later. Okay, well that's the basic architecture.